This here behind me is Samsung's new 49 inch Odyssey G9, the G91F to be exact. And for these past couple of weeks, it replaced both my gaming monitor and my dual studio display productivity setup. It was kind of brilliant with a couple of caveats. Let's ramble. Hold up, face go well when I pull up. They all on me like it wants. Hey guys, what's up? So today I'll show you what it's like to swap my Alienware QD OLED gamer setup for this 49 inch VA beast. And since this is more than just a gaming monitor, I'm also ditching my dual Apple Studio display setup to create the ultimate massive one monitor productivity setup. And when I say massive, I mean massive because at 49 inches, this big boy is literally like two 27 monitors fused together. Let me just give you a quick spec rundown before we get to the good stuff. Like I said, it's a 49 inch monitor, which makes it the smaller G9, if you can believe it. Samsung makes an even bigger 57 inch one, but I mean, come on, I think I'm good with 49 inches. It's got a 1000 R curve, which basically matches the natural curvature of the human eye. So it kind of wraps around your field of vision more comfortably, which theoretically makes gaming or working on this monitor more immersive and easier on the eyes because you don't have to move your head as much to to see the edges of the screen. It is dual QHD, meaning 5120 by 1440, with a refresh rate of up to 144 hertz and a fast response time of one millisecond. A contrast ratio of 2500 to one, it supports FreeSync Premium Pro, VESA Display HDR600, and HDR10 Plus Gaming. In terms of connectivity, it's got two HDMI 2.0 ports, one DisplayPort 1.4, USB-B upstream, and two USB-A ports, and of course, a headphone jack. What's missing is a USB-C port or a Thunderbolt port, which is kind of a bummer, especially for Mac users, but I've got a great solution for that, which I will show you later on in the video. What you also get is a height, tilt, and swivel stand, and a 100 by 100 VESA mount. So this is not the OLED G9, and it's not mini LED, it's the big value G9, which might actually be the perfect option for a lot of people, but more on that later. Now let's start by looking at this thing in a gaming context, since that is what it's primarily marketed as and probably what most people would buy this thing for. But after that, I will show you how this thing could actually be the final boss of productivity monitors, which in my opinion, makes this monitor even more interesting. For context, in my current gaming setup, my daily driver has been the Alienware 34 inch 3440 by 1440 QD OLED, 165 Hertz. Incredible contrast, super fast, gorgeous for games. That's my baseline. So to me, this has always felt like a pretty big monitor until I swapped it out for the G9, which absolutely dwarfs this thing. And as you can see, my desk is set up in a way to accommodate the 34 inch monitor. So I would definitely have to move some stuff around to make this guy work, but that should be easy enough. For the purpose of this video though, I'll just leave it on its stand instead of mounting it to the VESA arm on my desk, simply because we will be moving it over to my productivity desk after I'm done testing it in my gaming setup. Moving to 49 inches is like unlocking a hidden field of view perk. I'm not much of a racing or flight sims player, but I would imagine it would be absolutely perfect for those games. But even for the games I like to play, this monitor looks pretty phenomenal. Switching from the Alienware to this is like going from immersive to ridiculous in the best way possible. 32 by nine fills your peripheral vision so much that even the menus feel kind of cinematic. At 5120 by 1440 and 144 hertz with VRR, motion feels really smooth and input response feels great. The VA's 2500 to one contrast really helps with depth and the 1000 R curve wraps nicely around your field of view. And what I mean by that is that it feels natural. I thought gaming on a super wide monitor like this one would feel a little bit like watching a tennis match, you know, moving your head from left to right. But surprisingly, that's not the case at all. Now, while HDR 600 isn't quite OLED level, you do get a meaningful pop versus something like an HDR 400. Compared to my Alienware QD OLED, you do give up per pixel blacks and that instant pixel response. On very dark scenes, OLED will give you that inky black. The VA panel can show a touch of dark level smearing if you push the overdrive too far, but there's a simple fix tune the overdrive per refresh rate and keep VRR on at all times. Also, HDR tone mapping is different, less of that inky black, but 
HDR600 lets the panel push brighter specular highlights than SDR. Think sunlight, UI highlights, explosions, all of that stuff will pop a lot more, even if the overall scene isn't as deeply black as an OLED. Plus, with the G9, you won't have to worry as much about screen burn-in. A little tip, a lot of games support 32 by 9 natively, which does look fantastic as you can see, but some games might still letterbox, so do check your titles if you want to be 100% sure. Now, in terms of gaming ergonomics, the G9 is a big slab, so you should probably set it slightly further back than a 34 inch monitor, about an arm and a half for me personally, so the edges don't feel too close. The stand has height, tilt and swivel, but a sturdy VESA arm cleans up the desk really nicely. Like I said, I'm gonna test it in my productivity setup, so I'm not mounting it on a VESA arm right now, but if I would decide to keep it in my gaming setup, I would definitely do that. Right, so that's the G9 as a gaming monitor. But personally, I'm much more interested in using this thing in my productivity setup. And guys, it has been a very interesting experience. My current setup is powered by an M3 Ultra Mac Studio hooked up to a dual Apple Studio display setup. That means 5K retina sharpness, tons of vertical pixels, and a very Mac native look, if you will, and that is very hard to beat for text clarity. I've been a big fan of using this dual display setup. I know a lot of people don't really like the gap between the two displays created by those double bezels. Personally, I don't mind, and sometimes I even prefer it because it lets me use one monitor as my main and the second one I treat more like a bin where I just drop the stuff that I'm working with or I use one display for my research and the main one to write my stuff. Having said that, there are definitely scenarios where the dual display setup is not ideal like video editing, which is an important part of my workflow and that's where this G9 really shines. On the G9, the width equals two 27 inch QHD panels fused together. For editing timelines, spreadsheets and research, this canvas is amazing. For video work, a single ultra wide timeline is just nicer, you know? Less bezel, more continuous space. I can practically see my entire timeline without having to scroll. And that's a luxury for video editing. But you can totally use this thing as a virtual multi-monitor setup as well. It has a picture by picture mode baked in, which literally lets you treat it like two separate monitors. So I could have my Mac on the left side and I could hook up my PC to display on the right side. I won't be doing that because that's not what I'm after, but it's really cool to know that you have the option. And if you're working in a smaller space, having both machines on a single desk could be super useful. The way I use it personally, and this is where I completely nerd out with this G9, is with a window manager. There's a bunch of different ones out there. Personally, I use one called Better Snap Tool, but it really doesn't matter which one you pick. They all pretty much do the same stuff. And what this does is, it lets me snap my windows into perfect columns or rectangles, but you can also customize this process however you want by setting your own snap area. So your windows snap to whatever part of the screen you tell it to, and it stays that way every time you start up your computer. And guys, I've been enjoying working like this so much that I would seriously consider ditching that dual monitor setup in favor of the G9. Now, I won't be doing that for one simple reason, and that is color accuracy. Video editing is my number one activity at this desk, and color grading plays a very big part in that. I need to be 100% sure that what I see on my screen is what it will look like once I upload my videos, and it doesn't get more accurate than a studio display for me, especially since most of my audience will be watching my videos on an Apple device. That might change in the future, but for now, that's my reality. There are other trade-offs too. The G9 is 5120 by 1440, so the vertical resolution is 1440p, not 2160p like a 5K studio display. Text isn't retina sharp, if you will. At a sensible viewing distance, it's fine, but if you love microscopic UI scaling, this thing won't be as crisp as a 5K monitor, of course. So if your work is coding and dense text all day long, two studio displays might still win. But if your work is timelines, dashboards, tracks, or a lot of side-by-side -side apps, the G9's width is definitely a superpower. And there's a ton of cool features the G9 has baked in. It offers picture in picture, picture by picture, eye saver, flicker free modes, adaptive picture that nudges the brightness and a factory calibration report right in the box. So it's a nice plug and get to work experience. Staying in the context of Apple ecosystem issues, and I know a lot of you will care about that, I mentioned earlier that the G9 does not have USB-C or Thunderbolt display connectivity, but there are plenty of solutions to that, ranging from a simple dongle to a more permanent solution like a CalDigit docking station. 
Caldigit recently dropped their brand new TS5 that comes with Thunderbolt 5 connectivity and a whole raft of other ports. The TS4 has served me well for many years, so the TS5 was kind of a no-brainer for me. Caldigit are not sponsors, but they did send me this unit for free to try out, so a big shout out to them for doing that. The big advantage of having a permanent solution like that is that it allows me to swap out whatever part of my setup, in this case the displays, and leave everything else in place, making this process completely frictionless. So even though the G91F doesn't have USB-C, the overall setup still feels modern and tidy. All right, so this has been a lot of information. So let's quickly recap the main pros and cons before moving on to some thoughts. The most obvious pro for the Samsung G9 is of course the massive 32 by nine canvas. Absolutely perfect for games, timelines, and productivity. 144 hertz with VRR and that low input lag feels fantastic. And the solid VA contrast and HDR600 really makes this thing pop. Picture by picture is an absolute cheat code, and I love that it comes with a tilt, height, and swivel stand. In contrast, if you want a tilt and height adjustable stand on your Apple Studio display, Apple will charge you absolutely silly money for it. And another big pro for the Samsung G9 is its friendly price. They currently go for 850 bucks on the official Samsung website, and you might find even better deals during the upcoming Black Friday or Cyber Monday. By the way, I always do a tech deals video ahead of those days. So if you're into that kind of stuff, a sub to the channel would be super appreciated. Now, of course, this monitor does have some cons. They always do. It doesn't have that USB-C port, which I already mentioned, which is a bit of a bummer, especially for you Mac users. So you're gonna have to invest in a dongle or a hub if you don't already have one. Also, this is not an OLED model. So if you're a sucker for those inky blacks, you're probably gonna be better off checking an OLED model. Samsung has some great options there as well, but of course those will be in a higher price bracket. I'll put some links in the description below with some good options. 1440p vertical means the text isn't as retina sharp as a 5K monitor and the mass size of this monitor can also be a con if you're working in a very small space or your desk has limited options. So who should buy this Samsung G9? Well, if you're a gamer and you love that immersive look and feel, this monitor is a fantastic option. That 1000 R curve really is super comfortable for that. Or if you're a productivity nut like I am, but you want that single monitor that fits a bunch of windows and apps very comfortably, the G9 is an easy recommendation. If you're Mac heavy and you live in Final Cut, Logic, or giant spreadsheets, it's also great, as long as you're okay with trading 5K crispiness for that more panoramic width, and you're okay with adding a dock like the TS5 for connectivity. Now, if you're a hardcore HDR cinephile or you care most about perfect blacks and ultra crispy text up close, a 5K retina display or an OLED gaming monitor might still be a better choice, but at a higher price. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you didn't, just hit dislike twice. See you in the next one.